Hello there, I'm Nigel Griffiths. This series of videos is about the HMC Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live Demo. We're at part 8 now and we're looking at the excellent shared storage pools. Okay, let's go and look at shared storage pools, the clusters. This is a group of virtual I.O. servers that are cooperating over a set of LUNs and creating virtual disks in them. We can have 24 VO servers, which is typical with dual VO servers. That means 12 machines are cooperating. The uh, first thing that's particularly nice for shared storage pools is the power guys, administrators, can allocate the disk space at will, and it takes a second to do that, and it's uh, practically automatic, and um, it means we're also, across that 12 machines, we've got live partition mobility ready at all times. We don't have to ask the storage guys, can they map our LUNs into a target machine and get ready. Okay, so this is nice and quick, um, and we can see in here, I've got one tier in each of my shared storage pools. This one's got nine. This is my um, production one where I have my important data that I actually care about. Um, Star is on my Power 6 machines, and Spiral is crash and burn. It has a, has a nasty life. It has a lot of accidents. And I say, wonder what would happen if I deleted that, and yeah, we find out the hard way. So we have, it, it, typically a shared storage pool has a system uh, tier, uh, different tiers are different groups of LUNs, and they can be um, on the same disk subsystem, or they could be on different ones. So you could have a tier that is on, you know, flash disks, and a tier that's on brown spinning disks. And of course, they have sort of different performance. Um, or you could have uh, one tier a set of LUNs is in my local. Um, computer room and the other tier is actually in remote disks and I've got uh, you know, geography between the two tiers. I've got only one, one tier at the moment. This is my repository disk. If I click on here I can replace the repository disk. Um, I can do that uh, at any time. I'll have to click on here and it will show me what's available as a repository disk and then we could actually uh, allocate that and change it. It, it. it takes a couple of seconds to actually change a repository disk even if we uh, lose it we can rebuild it turns out the VO servers have a copy of what's on the disk and they can rebuild it at any time you want and if something goes wrong with your repository disk the HMC logs are full of warning messages down in here if I scroll down uh, these are all the VO servers that are in here this is quite interesting this HMC is connected to some machines we've seen you know, about power 8 machines but this shared storage pool is actually connected to some machines that are not managed by this HMC. So my old Intel based uh, HMC is managing the green machine but the and the VO servers that are on it. Um, but because it's a shared storage pool, this HMC can ask the shared storage pool in the VO server what else is connected to this pool and actually find out about the other machines. This is the, we can actually track them down with the serial numbers in here if we wanted to. Uh, I didn't realize uh, this software was that clever uh, until we saw that. Up in here then it says it's uh, 4 terabytes in size and there's 2 terabytes available. Uh, mirroring is set on because I've got uh, 2 sets of LUNs on different V7000 so if I lose the entire switch or the V7000 I've still got a mirror copy on my surviving V7000. This is the thresholds. This is actually the wrong name in here. Uh, maybe we should change that sometime. Uh, this is a huge space. So if the huge space, this is the green, goes over my threshold 85%, we start getting error messages in the HMC uh, events. And um, uh, this isn't the free space percentage of 85%. Uh, it's the free size percentage is 15% up in here. So this should be used space in here. But it's been around for so long that that's the way it is. This is for over committing. You can, because it's using thin provisioning in a shared storage pool, over commit your disk. Provided not everybody demands the full size they've been allocated, we can get away with that. But it gives you a sanity check. If you go, you know, 200% over your commitment, you're probably going to hit a problem uh, in the future. Uh, let's do some operation here. Now, I tend to use the go into a VO server and to run the commands that are fairly simple to do this, but we can do it all on the graphical user interface. So, we're going to add a tier uh, and let's call this um, so dev test or something. Let's try and spell it right. Um, the free Threshold, let's set that at 85%, and the overcommit, uh, let's go a bit mad on here, 
Uh, now I've got ignore this LUN in here. I was trying some experiments on here. I've got four LUNs in here. The first two are on a V7000 called uh, TAN. So if in here I give the one mirror, I'm going to tell it, use the name to remind myself that it's on a V7000 called TAN, and this one's on a V7123 called DUN. TAN and DUN, of course, are brown colours, brown spinning discs. Um, and uh, if I click that, it changes the name in here. So these two are on the TAN, and these two are on DUN, and these, because they're in different failure groups, and now they'll be mirrored uh, versions of them, so those two. These will be mirrored onto these two, so we got the duplication there again. And I could just click OK. It's a very easy way of doing these sorts of things. It's already checked that these LUNs are available on all the VO servers in the cluster so that we can have a common view of all the disks in here. So it's running a couple of commands there over on the one of the VO servers that does it on a cluster-wide basis. And now we have a new tier in here. Now I could go to a virtual machine like Blue we were looking at earlier and tell it to do a migrate from the um, system tier to the test dev tier and it'll actually move all the blocks from the system tier into the dev test tier they can be on two different disk subsystems so that could result in my data going from an EMC disk subsystem to a nice sparkling IBM disk subsystem so we're actually moving the data across the computer room um, even across countries if you if that's what we wanted to do okay now um, let's have a drill into this and we're going to click on a particular here in here so the details are the same up in here these are the two failure groups so we can see the actual disks in in here and if I scroll down here here's the other failure group the other set of of LUNs um, they don't come out in any particular order if I click on here 0 to 15 so there's uh, 16 of them I'm on each of my V7000s okay and uh, th this name actually here is important. This is actual the name of the LUN on my V7000. So I could go to my my uh, web browser on my V7000, and this is the actual name I attach to the LUN. So I can be very clear that I've got the right one. I don't have to go check in any of those peculiar, great big worldwide numbers or whatever they are for the for disks. Um, it's actually sorting all that out for me. Okay, if we go back up in here. Um, we can rename those as well. Um, actions in here, what have we got? Yeah, rename a tier. We've got a button, add capacity, add more LUNs to a particular tier or take LUNs off it. It will move the data off the LUNs before we actually remove them. Uh, we could disable mirroring or changing those thresholds if you want to change the 85 and the, uh, the, the 110 in this case. If we look at the sh shared storage pool volumes, these are my virtual disks, is what I tend to call them. Um, and so here they all are. Um, if I reorder them, remember the blue partition? Here's blue root that uh, it's booting off. It's running a copy of AIX. Of course, I don't mirror it at the AIX level. It's mirrored at the shared storage pool level. So the operating system doesn't need to know. Particularly nice if you're running Linux because uh, mirroring those is a right pain. And we can actually mirror them in the shared storage pool and it doesn't have to be aware that a mirror has fallen away and it has to be resilvered and the shared storage pool will do that all automatically for us. If while we're in here, there's a little button here called show assignment in here. That would actually go looking, excuse me, for each of these virtual disks and it would tell it uh, what it's connected to. Let's reorder them again. Um, here it is. So you can say these blue backup, blue root disk, blue scratch and blue web, this is where my website's in, in this one, uh, are all attached to my blue partition. Uh, it's an internal website. Uh, IBM is only. Okay, if I, I click on one of these I could do an action in here. So here's the migrate to a different tier and uh, if I click on that I could um, well, it knows that test dev is the only other tier we got, so it's suggesting that's a good target. I could click OK, and it would actually migrate the data to my new disk subsystem. Okay. 
that's enough about shared storage pools very nice graphical user interface for controlling a shared storage pool saves you doing a lot of uh, the hard work with lots of commands although the commands are quite simple if once you get to know them let's uh, zoom back up in here to home and then we'll get to the next part that's the conclusion of shared storage pools in part 9 we're looking at templates for servers and templates for virtual machines